All right, welcome to Chatting and Shab, the brand new Harbinger talk show. I'm your host, Tristan Chabanese, and today I have the pleasure of having Brian Henniger along with us. Welcome, Brian Henniger. How's it going? Good to see you. How are you today, Brian? So well. So well? So well. I love to hear that. Yes, sir. All right, so I've been preparing this for, for quite a long time, Brian. Um, and, and last night, you know, I decided I need to, to get to know who I'm interviewing, who right. I've got here right next to me. And so, believe it or not, I actually Googled your name oh. on my laptop, you know. All right. I Googled your name. And one of the first things that popped up was this little, this little headline from the Shawnee Mission South newspaper, right? right. Written by your, one, one of your, your friends, Jake Foyle. Great friend. Yep. Great friend. Um, and so the, the headline goes like this. It goes... Shawnee Mission South team, football team, gears up to play their most hated opponent of the season. Take a guess as to who that is, Brian. Have to go with Shawnee Mission East. You have to go with Shawnee Mission East. All right, so I'm, I'm looking through this, and, and I, I'm, I'm looking for your name, obviously. And, and I find this little snippet right here. This year, however, star wide receiver Preston Reynolds, six foot four, one eighty five senior, mm. looks to make the biggest impact. As well as Brian Henniger, who's That's a first year starter, who's <laughs> made a difference at East. Right. He's helped the offensive line gain some ground this year. So that was your first year on the football team. Tell me about that year, man. How was yeah, it? Yeah, it was my first year actually starting on varsity. Um, it was a great time. Learned a lot. Uh, definitely a step up from JV. Really? Yeah. So it was a great time, uh, and yeah, I mean, it was a rough year, but had a lot of fun. Yeah, so, so talking a little bit more on that year, so you guys, because of COVID, were in danger of not even having a season at all, right? Yeah. Um, tell me about how that, you know, I think it was, I believe it was August 24th, you guys went to the CAA, and you guys protest, um, you guys went out and protest for, you know, you, you chanted, uh, let us play, tell me mm -hmm. about that. Yeah, so we knew we had a uh, chance of not even playing, and obviously we wanted to play. The seniors wanted to have their senior season, so we were like, we're going to use our American rights and go protest. Great use of American rights, yeah. if, if I'd say so. Um, and, so, and so, as I was reading this article, right, I got down to, to Jake Foyle, you know, at, at the bottom they have a little bio. Right. Um, and it said in his bio, you know, close friend of yours again, right. it said, um, he's, you know, faith is an important part of his life. Yeah. So I, I met you at K-Life, Brian, yeah. for anyone who doesn't know, K-Life is a small, it's a youth Christian organization. And, um, Brian, tell me about your faith and just going to K-Life. Yeah. So I've always grown up in the church, going to church. Um, it was kind of like my parents would drive me to church in hopes of like me becoming Christian. And so really like around third grade, I like made the choice of like I am Christian and that's just like kind of been my faith, I guess, like my religion for my whole life. All right. that's, that's great, I love to hear it. So something else obviously important to you is football. Right. Um, how has, has football, when did you start playing football and how has that played into, into who you are? Uh, I started playing in fifth grade, like competitively, but like I'd always grown up going to my brother's games and like playing football at recess, obviously, and like wanting to be like like my brother. So I would like beg my parents to play, let me play football, like all of elementary school. And then like fifth grade came, and they were like, "Yeah, it's like time for you to start playing football." It's time. I was like, "All right, let's do it." Right on. Yeah. How how has uh, East football been? Uh, over the past couple of years, I mean. We haven't had the greatest success on the field, but especially this year, like the brotherhood that we had off the field mm -hmm. was just like one of the greatest experiences of my life. Can you like, tell, tell me a little bit more about that, that brotherhood, that connection you get to share. So two years ago, obviously like the seniors, like we didn't hang out with them as much because of COVID and stuff. But this year we like decided, hey, we're gonna like actually build bonds and like uh -huh. become brothers with these like underclassmen who like mm -hmm. might not know what's going on yeah and so we kind of just started it like started i think it was like a a warm summer night a warm summer night and we were all just like my boys we were chilling playing some basketball yeah we were mm -hmm. like i wonder what the sophomore boys are doing right now 
So we look at Snap Maps. It's Joey Hoffman's birthday. Joey Hoffman's birthday. Great guy. Fantastic guy. And we were like, all right, let's see if we can just like go hang out with them. It was kind of their like group of guy friends. Uh -huh. And it was like me, Rhett Wallace, Kyler Houghton, uh, Breck McGuire mixed in with like Christian Gooley, Joey Hoffman, Jack Jones, like all those boys. Uh -huh. and, like that was kind of the start of like, yeah, like this is like, these are my brothers type thing. That's awesome. That's fantastic. I'm so glad you guys um, have just like a, a connection and relationship like that. Yeah. Um, so just to wrap things up uh, before uh, before we go, you know, this obviously is um, the, the days are counting down before you right. leave the East. Um, I just can you can you share just a funny memory? Uh, one of your best memories at East. Um, it's a broad question. Yeah, it's a it's a big question. Um, one of my favorite memories would probably be. Beating South is always fun. It's always a great time after that. I um, can't really think off the top of my head. I think Banyos are always Banyos. going to be a memory. You know, something Something I'll always remember is when we were going to the lift tub, right? Right. And, and everybody's packing in the gym, right? And, and we need to quiet down because the right. camera's yeah. coming in. And so you, Brian, you take the mic, and, and being pep exec, you know, you, you try and take charge, and you tell everybody to shut up. Yeah. Like, shut up, you know? And, and and everybody quiets down as you speak, and then afterwards we just all start getting hyped. You know, yeah. everybody's chanting, everybody's screaming. Yeah. You you couldn't shut them down, and that's just you know something that a little I I a knack that you no, had yeah. just to get people hyped. I so. I think that's also just like part of our culture. Like, we're we're not gonna settle down for anybody, hey. and like we're all we'll always stay rowdy. <laughs> we'll always stay rowdy. Well, um. Thank you, Brian. It was such a pleasure having you on hey, today. The pleasure is mine. All right. And that wraps up our first episode of Chandler Stash.